Okay, so for the materials needed, first thing that you're gonna need is sodium chloride, which is pretty much just salt. Um, you can use sea salt, or you can buy one like this, that's a pure salt. Second thing you'll need is silver nitrate. This is the component that actually darkens the image. I recommend getting at least the 30 gram, which is this one. Um, you're gonna need at least 12 grams for the recipe that I'm gonna give. So I'll put that in the link below. And then for the salt prints, you're gonna use sodium thiosulfate as a fixer. You can also use rapid fixer, but from what I've heard, it's a little too aggressive and it'll wash away most of the image, which you don't want. So for this, we're gonna use sodium thiosulfate. For the paper for the salt prints, you're gonna to wanna to have a paper that is able to withstand a lot of liquid. So you can use watercolor paper, or I was recommended to use this paper, which is actually designed for this type of printing. As you can see on the package, it says designed for platinum and alternative process. So it's actually meant for this. So I recommend getting this one, it worked for me. Also, most papers come in eight by 10, so you will have to cut this down. Four by five paper is very rare and you probably won't find any except for some pre-coated papers that are already like ready to print. But for the most part, you will have to cut down your own paper. So for cutting the paper down, you will need a pencil to mark your measurements. I recommend using an X-Acto knife and you'll need a sturdy ruler, like a steel one with a cork back that won't slip around. You will also need a contact printing frame. These are readily available on eBay. You can find these, there's quite a bit of them. One thing about them is they're all pretty much really old. So you're not gonna find one in like super great condition. Also, I would recommend finding one that is preferably under $20. There's a lot of them on eBay that are like 30, 40, like even $60. I would try to avoid those and try to get one that's as cheap as possible. You can also use like a regular picture frame. It's not gonna be as good as a contact print frame, but it will work. Also, I got this one for $12 plus shipping. So I would say that's a pretty good deal. I would. Try to get one in that range if you can. You do also need some gloves. The silver, it will stain your skin as you can see on my hands there. And it's also not recommended to get it in your eyes. It can cause damage, but it is not extremely toxic on your skin. So, you know, you're not gonna be in danger there. You do also need some cotton balls. I would get the biggest ones that you can because when you're coating, uh, you'll see after a couple rounds that once you coat, it's not, covering quite as much as you thought it was, so you have to be really thorough when you do coat these. Also for the solutions, you're gonna to wanna to put these in amber bottles like these. These are both 500 milliliter bottles, which is a good size for these solutions because you don't need a ton of the solution. This is the silver, you're gonna need less, but for the salt solution, the salt is really cheap. You can make a higher volume of solution and that's gonna be better for when you float the paper. This is a little setup that I like to do for the bathroom. If you have a drying rack, you're welcome to use that, of course. But if you don't have one, you can get a washcloth and just hang clips like this, and you can use that as your drying rack. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is get one of these trays like that, fill it up with the salt solution, and drop your sheet right on top. You don't have to dunk it under or anything, you just wanna float it on the top and get a nice coating on that one side, evenly over the paper. You can let it set in there for a little bit, and you'll notice as it soaks up more water, it'll start to curl up on the edges. And once it gets a pretty decent curl, you can go ahead and pull it out that's fully coated. With this paper, I do recommend marking the back side with a pencil. That way you know which side is the back and which side has been coated. And you'll notice when it's actually wet, you can see all the shininess, you can see where it's all coated. But once it dries, it's gonna look exactly the same as the other side, so it's gonna be really hard to tell the difference. So make at least some kind of mark that you'll recognize on the back side with the pencil. Once you've coated all the sheets, you can hang them to dry. After it's salted, you can do the next step at any time that you like. Of course, after these are completely dry, these will not work if you add the silver while it's still wet. It's gonna darken right away and it's gonna ruin the sheet. So you wanna make sure it's completely dry. But once it's salted though, you don't have to sensitize immediately. You can just have them salted for days if you like that's totally okay. I like to hang them though because you can clean up and it gives you a chance to clear your area before you move on to the next step. The salt solution is reusable. It's not contaminated at this point, so you can just pour it back and reuse it. And you're also welcome to use a hairdryer if you like to dry the prints. Once the salt portion has completely dried, you can do the sensitizing stage or add the silver solution 
And so you can use a brush on this portion or I prefer to use the cotton balls. I feel like it gets a better coat, but you wanna make sure you brush in all directions, coat as evenly as possible. After you've sensitized the paper and it's completely dry, you're ready to expose the image. So you're gonna to wanna to grab your contact frame and your negative, whether it's a glass plate or a film negative. You wanna do emulsion to emulsion. So this is a large format negative. So this is the emulsion side up. So this part is gonna be in contact with the paper on the sensitized side. So basically you want the sensitized sides to face each other. So that's gonna go right on top of the film negative and we'll place the cover over that in the contact print frame. Once it's all closed up, you can go ahead and place the contact print frame in the light, but I don't recommend putting it in direct sunlight like this. I tried it a few times and the print got blown out way too fast. It printed way dark and it didn't give it a good chance to render the tones. So with this, it's kind of better if you go like low and slow. So if you place it in some even shade, it's going to be much better. You can also check the print at certain points through the exposure. So you'll notice once you get those really deep blacks, it's going to be pretty close to done. So you can check it periodically with the split frame back like that and check to see it's, if it's to your liking or not. Once it's reached its full exposure, you can go ahead and take it out of the printing frame. And the first thing that you're going to, want to do is you're going to put it into a water bath and you're going to get all the salt and uh, unused chemicals off the film. You're going to kind of do like a pre-wash and then you'll notice the water is going to get really cloudy and all that, a lot of that salt water is going to come off. So after you do that, I would say a minute or two, you would transfer it into the fixer. This is the sodium thiosulfate. And you're going to want to fix this for at least 10 minutes. And you'll notice it's going to go from kind of like a blackish purple to more of like a chocolate brown color in the fixer. And it, it will lighten up a bit. So it's going to change slightly once you drop it into the fixer. After you're done fixing the print, you're going to want to wash it for at least five minutes, preferably like 10 minutes or longer. You need to wash all the fixer out so that the image doesn't darken over time. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and hang it to dry. And you will also notice after it dries that the tones are going to change once again. So this is one of the salt prints that I did today. These are some of the results that you can expect. If you notice, it's like very kind of splotchy. Those dark parts is not coated completely over the whole sheet. I kind of got a little creative today and I splashed the coatings on there to give it more of like a handmade look. But this isn't like a perfect print. I still need to keep practicing, but over time, if you like these, you can keep practicing and you will get better. But these are some of the results that you can expect. I thought these would be a nice like summer activity since it is starting to get warmer and there's more light available. So I hope you guys give these a try. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you'd be interested in trying, or if you have tried it, come back and let me know how your results turn out. I'd love to hear from you guys. Anyway, if you found this video to be helpful or enjoyable, please go ahead and give it a like and if you haven't already yet, we're going to be doing more analog stuff, so go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on The Negative. Okay.